Gleaner Heights, at first glance, looks like a half-cocked Stardew Valley. But after spending a ton of time with the game and completing it, I can tell you that's not the case. Gleaner Heights is its own game in the farming sim genre. It focuses on story and community more than anything else, which puts it on its own path. Now, I can't say that it fully succeeds, but there's something here that definitely makes it distinct and interesting to play, especially compared to those other games. So what I'm not going to do in this review is go over a list of differences between Gleaner Heights and Stardew Valley, even though that's the most obvious comparison. That would be boring. I want to talk about what Gleaner Heights has to offer in its own right. And at its core, the game focuses on the story and befriending the community more than anything else. The town has secrets, and as the new person, you are not privy to the town's history or gossip. At first, you're an outsider, but stick around and you'll learn more about the people, their lives, and their relationships. You can start building up trust and learning more clues about the town, putting together why there's an FBI agent staying in town, or what's the deal between the carpenter and the blacksmith? Some of the people just need your help, too. Anyway, I really enjoy all the secrets this town has to offer. Have to put in a real effort to build up those relationships because you'll get story items and info. It's the only way to complete the game. Some of what happens in the town has real weight behind it. You're never quite sure what secrets a town person has, and I enjoyed getting to know them all. From the start, it seems so basic, but as you press on and keep getting to know the community, more is revealed. Befriending someone is a fairly standard system of trying to figure out what the person likes and then trying to gift them that item as much as possible. And to do that, you'll be farming, raising animals, and mining. Now, the farming is pretty much what you would expect. Buy seeds, plant seeds, water until you can harvest, repeat. One thing that is interesting is that the rain can wash away your seeds. Honestly, it's a bit of realism I didn't need. Taking care of animals is also exactly what you would expect. Pet them, talk to them, feed them, generally keep them happy so they produce a better product. For example, you'll get small eggs at first, then larger and giant eggs if the chicken really likes you. There are a lot of related items though. I have to carry two different kinds of feed, a, a pair of shears, a milker, and a brush. It's a lot of inventory space and financial investment for not much benefit. The animals are expensive too. I might have purchased a chicken too early. You'll need to keep the animals happy before they start producing, and even then, it, it just takes so much time before they're giving you the larger items. I never did find taking care of animals very enjoyable in any of these games, so keep that in mind. The mine is probably where you'll make the bulk of your income. The mining actually requires you to break down walls to find ore. A warning though, that it only gets really profitable fairly deep in the mine. Still, I actually like breaking down the walls and creating my own path through each level. What I didn't like is how each level of the mine changes as you move between them. There's no clear path down to the bottom. That's fine, but when you're going back up, you'll be greeted with in a different layout each floor. This makes getting back to the top quite tedious. Now, I didn't say tricky because it's actually not difficult. If you're in any danger, just pop back down to the previous floor and maybe look for some green or black herbs. The green herbs refill stamina and the black ones health. You can keep doing this until it's safe or you run out of patience. It feels like cheating because you don't have to manage your health or time by staying in the mine. There are green herbs almost everywhere. Which brings me to my next point. The world time stops while you're in the mine. I suppose they had to do this since each floor changes. I've ended up spending way more time in the mine than I wanted to. I was out of stamina, so I didn't want to hammer more walls down. I needed to switch back and forth between levels until the ladder was accessible. It's frustrating and so time consuming. I don't understand why the layout changes every time. I really wish the clock kept going and the mine randomized every night. 
I think that would keep the same feeling and you would be making a decision to use your time in the mine instead of other town activities. It would also be a lot more respectful of my time. I do not want to feel trapped in the mine. There's also a strange focus on combat. The combat is very simple, as expected, so it's one of the weakest parts of the game. There are a lot of enemies in the mine and they will often need to be cleared out. It's not that they're difficult, but just more annoying. This also translates to bosses as well. They are interesting and it's nice to have a feeling of accomplishment, but they're pretty easy. Because of the simple combat, it's all about dodging and hitting with your favorite tool. Doing all of these activities will level up your character's individual stat levels for them. There's almost one for everything, and sometimes it feels duplicated. For example, there is one for the hammer and one for mining, but you can't mine without the hammer. You'll be leveling up both of those at the same time. After you gain a certain amount of those levels, you'll gain a trait point. These are actually interesting, but of course they have the basic increased stamina and health ones. You can also select from ones that will break down more rocks in the mine, or help you see in the dark, or give you cooking recipes. Depending on your playstyle, some of these will be better the choices than others. You can't change these once you select one, and it's difficult to know which are good. The game lets you select ones like the cooking one before you can even utilize it. You get the recipes, but if your house isn't upgraded, you can't cook anything. It does force you to try everything to level up, I like knowing that my actions are improving my character. Unfortunately, some of these are easier to level up than others. Mining you'll have leveled up really quickly, but animal husbandry barely moves at all. As with other games in the genre, there is manufacturing and crafting. Gleaner Heights does let you craft some really interesting items. The only special thing about the crafting system is that the manufacturing system is trapped inside it. For example, you'll need to craft the cheese maker before you can make cheese. Then you can craft cheese, but it's at the workbench. I thought the cheese maker would turn into an item I could use to create the cheese. Oh well. It's boring and feels like something is missing. Instantly turning milk into cheese is odd. So unless you need to give milk as a gift, it's always a good idea to turn it into cheese. The problems with the crafting system are exacerbated by the inability to craft a storage container. I don't think you're going to run out of storage, but why can't I be organized? I just want to keep the items I need for farming at the farm, or the animal ones near the animals. Gleaner Heights gives you one storage container in your house, and it's so far away from crafting and your animals, it's pointless. You just need to carry everything you need with you. Forget one item and you're walking all the way back to your house. It's a good idea to upgrade your backpack space early. You could throw items in the ground, but that's a complete mess. One last thing that I can't let go is that marriage kinda sucks. Your partner just shows up at your house and it doesn't seem like they move in at all. None of their stuff is in my house. They also don't help out around the house. What a waste. Gleaner Heights' story is supposed to have a strange feeling. They say, quote, suburban gothic atmosphere of certain 90s TV shows, end quote. And they're talking about Twin Peaks. I've seen that show, and I don't think this game really qualifies. It doesn't take it far enough. Twin Peaks gets weird, unnerving, and extreme. The story in this game is kind of basic. I enjoyed learning about some of the subplots more than the main storyline. That made me feel more like a part of the town and care more for the characters. I do appreciate the effort, and I think it sets it apart from the other farming games. Just so you know, there's character customization, and it's everything on your character. How much hair they have, what color everything is. You do have to choose your love interests when creating your character, which locks it in. That's a lot less interesting than just letting it happen in the game. Another customization is selecting your previous job. It buffs your character based on your selection, which is kind of nice. One final thing to know is that Gleaner Heights has some performance problems. There are many times when the frame rate dips below 60 FPS. It's very noticeable, and you can feel the character become sluggish. 
I definitely came across a few bugs too. Like when my horse was stuck in a doorway I wanted to enter, I couldn't get past him and he couldn't move from his spot. I had to just restart the day. I will say it's not enough to not play the game and the developers seem to be making improvements and listening to the community. Overall, Gleaner Heights is a really interesting game. There's so many surprises and I think the game really shines when it introduces a completely unexpected mechanic. There's some real thought that was put into the main story and especially the side stories. It's a lot of good ideas plagued with improper implementation. Why no storage chests? Why the strange shifting mining levels? Look, if you can get past these annoyances, then you'll probably enjoy Gleaner Heights. If you like other farming sims and are looking for something different, then I think you found it. It's just less polished and slower. Really, heed my words, this is a different game than the others, so don't try and compare it to them. However, there is a ton of game here and you will have your hands full for a really long time. Thanks for watching.